Good day, everybody, and welcome to Theonos again. Um, so grateful and so glad to have you guys. Today we are doing a very, very interesting talk, and we're going to answer the following question. Why does it sometimes happen that I'm in God's will and I still don't have peace? Is that, is that even possible to not have peace, to not feel peaceful about something, almost as if your intuition or gut feeling says run, or almost as if your emotions say this is not a good idea, but you are still in the will of God. Is that possible? The answer is yes. And today we're going to look at it biblically and scientifically and psychologically. Why does that happen? Why does it happen that I'm in the will of God, but I don't have peace? So a lot of times people think that if you're in the will of God, you're going to have this 100% peace, 100% calmness. Everything is just going to feel right. And I've realized through my own life, first, I've realized that it's not that it's not 100% accurate. And then I saw in scripture that it's not 100% accurate. So today we're going to look at that. Thank you so much for watching. I want to ask you guys to hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so yet. We are trusting God and praying for this channel to go to a thousand subscribers. And we also ask you that um, if you enjoy this video, if you believe this video can help other people, that you will share it with other people. And um, feel free to leave a comment, ask some questions, tell us what you think about this session. Um, and we, I will see if I can answer your questions or maybe do a follow-up video on it. Thank you to everybody who's giving financially. Your financial contribution is helping me and is helping us to keep on doing what we are doing to help other people on a biblical teaching um, and psychological level because our calling at Theonos is to help people with their mind, their emotions, and um, we believe in the uh, we believe that we are spirit, soul, and body. And we believe the spiritual area is very important, but we also believe that the area of the soul, the mind, the will, and the emotions should not be, in, be neglected. And that is the area that we mainly focus on, the mind, the will, and the emotions. And we do it in a biblical way, trusting God to bring healing to people. So thank you so much for contributing financially to that. So we're going to speak about when you are in the will of God, but you still don't have peace. Now, I don't know if you guys, um, if you have children or if you've been around children, um, have you seen like I've I've seen this one instance in the in in a, in a swimming pool where the where the dad wants to be with the kid in the swimming pool and the dad is like I will, you know I will hold on to you. You don't have to be afraid. You can come into the water and the kid is like no 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 I don't want to go into the water and the kid has this fear, doesn't feel okay with the water, kind of afraid of the water, and the dad is like no I want you to come in. I will hold you. I will protect you, and the still and the kid still doesn't want to want to want to get in the water because of because of fear, because of anxiety, because of uncertainty, maybe. And that this is basically what this is about, where, where where the Father God tells you to come. It's okay. I want you to come. This is my will for you, and you still feel anxious. You still you still feel fearful. You still feel like you don't want to do it. This is what happens when you are in the will of God. Or God tells you to do something, but you don't feel peace about it. Now, I do know that the Bible speaks about a godly peace. And a lot of people preach this, you know, there's a godly peace and you shouldn't do anything without a godly peace. I agree with that. But there's a difference between um, the sp having peace in the spiritual dimension and having peace in the soul dimension where your mind, your will and emotion is. So on a spiritual level, God can say, yes, this is my will for, uh, for your life. But if you're not healthy and healed, in the soul dimension, in your mind, in your will, and your emotions, there will be a lack of peace, although you are in the will of God. So spiritually, it is God's will, but in your soul, in your mind, your will, and your emotions, because of maybe past, hurt, past hurts, because of an unrenewed mind, because your soul is not as healthy as it should be, there can be places where you feel like, okay, I don't want to do this, although it's in God's will. And, and, you, and you will see that a lot of times where God calls people into a certain area, but because of fear, um, because of a desire for other things, maybe they run away. So let's look at the, the scripture. This is actually something that happened with the Apostle Paul. And if this happened with the Apostle Paul, it can surely happen to us. So let's see, let's look at what it is and why it happened. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 2 verse 12 to 13 in the Passion Translation, Paul is writing and he says, when I arrived in Troas, bringing the wonderful news of Christ, the Lord opened a great door of opportunity to minister there. 
Still, I had no peace of mind because I couldn't find my dear brother Titus anywhere. So after saying goodbye to the believers, I set out for Macedonia to look for him. So here we see the Lord is opening a door for Paul to go preach. Paul doesn't have peace. He doesn't go through the door and he goes to Macedonia. So why doesn't Paul have peace and why is he going to Macedonia? Well, he's going to Macedonia because he's worried about Titus. Now, why is he worried about Titus? To understand this, we must look at the, we must look at the background of the book of Corinthians and why it was written. So the book of Corinthians was written because Paul received two letters. One of the letters was, was from people in Corinth asking him questions. And they were asking questions about marriage. You know, is it a good thing to get married? They were asking questions about women in church. May women speak in church? They were asking questions about are they, are they allowed to eat meat that was offered to idols? Some questions that they asked and Paul wrote to answer, to, to answer these questions. But another reason this, this book was written is because Chloe sent Paul some information about things that was going on in the church in Corinth that wasn't good. Things like division was happening a lot. Legislations, people were taking each other to court and fighting. Um, there, was six, there were things like sexual immorality, idolatry in the church. And Chloe was writing to Paul to address these issues. So now what Paul did is he wrote back and he gave the letter to Timothy. Timothy had to go and he had to fix a lot of things in the, in the, in the current church. But because Timothy was intimidated by the people. This is also why Paul wrote in 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, God did not give you a spirit of fear. That spirit of fear actually in the, in the original translation is the spirit of timidity, spirit of intimidation. So Timothy had a spirit of intimidation. He went to the church of Corinth, but because he was so intimidated by the people, he couldn't take strong leadership. And Timothy left the church almost in a worse state than what he found it. So the first, the, the, the first visit uh, that Paul had to the church of Corinth was a good visit. He was addressing some things, but he, but he approached them as beloved. The second visit wasn't as, ple as um, pleasant because Timothy had a spirit of intimidation and he left the church in a, in, in, in a worse state than what he found. So now Paul was, was sending the second letter by a, uh, through a guy named Titus. Titus was older than Timothy. And Titus had a more strong, bold leadership style, and he could get things fixed in the, in, the, in the church of Corinth. So because of the things that happened in the church of Corinth, and because of the letter that Paul wrote to the Corinthian church addressing certain things, there was kind of like um, something that happened in their relationship that wasn't great. Now, now Paul is trying to fix his relationship with the Corinthian church. And um, he's sending Titus to take some leadership and, and, and to put things in place in the church. Now God opens a door for, um, for, Paul, for Paul to minister. But he's so worried about what happened, what, what happened to Titus and what's happening in the church of Corinth that he, that he didn't have peace of mind to go through the door that God has opened for him. So in the spiritual sense, God is opening the door. But because Paul is worried about something in his mind, in his emotions, because he's worried about Titus, and because he's worried about what's going on in the church of Corinth, he couldn't go through the door that God has given, has given him, or quite the door that God has opened for him. So a lot of times God does something in our lives. He opens a door in business. He opens a door in work. He opens a door in a different city. He opens a door in relationships. But because we are so worried about something else, what if I go through this door? Metaphorically in your own life, you can see Titus as things that you are worried about that you don't want to leave or that you cannot, you cannot trust God in that area. So you cannot go through the door door that God has for you because on a, on a soul dimension, when, you, when your mind, will and emotions get into place, you are still worried about other things. Meaning if you don't get healthy in your soul, when you don't get healthy in your mind, your will and your emotions, God can do things in your life and you, and you will still feel unpeace about it and you will still feel like it's not God. Now, I know in my life there are some doors that God opened, there are some opportunities that God opened that I didn't go through because I didn't have peace and I thought if I don't have peace, it's not God. 
But now I realize the reason I didn't have peace was because of things that happened in my own mind, in my own will, and in my own emotions. So what is your gut feeling and why is it important? So we're going to speak about what's the difference between a gut feeling, a good gut feeling, um, and just a bad emotional response. So if you took two polystyrene cups and you put them into each other, even if you take a few of them, um, they will fit into each other very easily. But if you take two, let's say for instance, two coffee mugs and you try to put them in each other because they have handles, they don't go in. It feels kind of forced. So that's the best way I can explain how the gut works. Something just sits easily. Something just sits naturally. Something just sits comfortably. Now, if you're not healthy emotionally, if you're not healthy in your mindset, if there are things that you haven't dealt with, God can give you something, but it still doesn't feel like it's fitting well because you haven't dealt with yourself. You haven't dealt with your own emotional state. Uh, Martha Love said, gut feelings associated with emptiness or fullness from the foundation of emotional experience, form the foundation of emotional experiences, rather, sorry. Emotions involve both bodily sensations originating from the gut and cognitive processes such as fear, meaning your thinking, your cognitive processes, the way you think about things and your emotional state will influence your gut feeling. So gut feeling is an important thing. But if you're, if, if you're not at a good place in your mindset, if you're not at a good place in your emotions, it can influence your gut feeling in a bad way. So something can, can be right, but it can feel wrong um, because, because you haven't dealt with yourself mentally and emotionally. Daniel Goleman said, and Daniel Goleman wrote the book on emotional intelligence, he said, gut feelings or somatic markers or, or, automatic, or automatic alarms that signals potential danger or opportunity in our actions. They often steer us away from risky choices, though they can also point out golden opportunities. We may not know the exact source of these negative feelings, but they serve, uh, but, but they serve as a crucial warning about potential disasters. So the gut feeling or the somatic markers that Daniel Goleman is speaking about is there to show us how to protect ourselves from things that are bad and how to get into things that are golden opportunities. So the gut feeling, the intuition is a very important thing. But if you're not emotionally and mentally at a good place it can have a bad influence or there can be a bad could there can be bad communication between your gut feeling and intuition and your spiritual realm so so in the spirit god can tell you something and god can open a door but if you're not healthy in the mind and the emotions it can influence your gut in such a way that you can that that you won't have peace even though you're in the will of God. And this is what happened to Paul. God sent him somewhere. God opened doors for him. But because he was so worried, because he was so fearful about the state of the church in Corinth and where Titus was and what Titus was busy was busy with, he couldn't go through the door. But, you know, we still see that God used Paul in a great and amazing way. So this shouldn't worry us and say, okay, I've missed some opportunities and I didn't do this and I didn't do this. God is gracious. God is merciful. And God knows your, your situation. So don't think that God doesn't know your situation. The reason for this message is not to tell you, you know, because of your mental and emotional state, you've lost a bunch of opportunities and maybe you have, but God is so grace, gracious, God is so merciful that he will keep on opening doors and he will keep on opening opportunities. So I believe all of us heard the saying that says, follow your heart. And you know, this is, this is advice that a lot of people give. And, I, and I've said this before that follow your heart can sometimes be bad advice. I'm not saying it's always bad advice, but sometimes it can be bad advice because your heart is not always in the will of God. And a lot of times when people say, follow your heart, what they mean is follow your feelings. If you have a good feeling, go with it. If you have a bad feeling, don't go with it. And like I said, it's not always wrong, but a lot of times it's not 100% correct either. So Jeremiah 17 verse 9 said the following, says the following, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? So here he says, question your heart. There's a, a, in Proverbs 4, the Bible says, protect your heart. So never in scripture will you hear, follow your heart. In scripture, you will hear things like the heart is deceitful. You cannot always trust it. You have to question it and you have to protect it. Heart in this, in this scripture is the word leb. 
and it speaks about your mind, your affections, and your will. So he says, don't always trust your mind, your affections, and your will. Emotions are important. Mindset is important. Uh, and, and you can do a lot with your mind and emotions, but they're not always right. So when you feel something emotionally, it's not always right. Now, you get people who are more intuitive. You get people who can who are more inclined to feel. And a lot of times these people can trust their emotions more. And um, here I'm also speaking about the importance of emotions. I'm speaking about the importance of intuition. I'm a person who firmly believes very strongly in following your intuition. I'm just saying these, these, these feelings are not always 100% right. In my company, Mind Prosperity, we have a slogan and the slogan is step back. So every single time you want to do something, feel something, think something, don't always believe it. Take a step back and evaluate it. So what do we want to do? We don't want to. We don't. We don't want to ignore our feelings. We don't want to say, "If I don't have peace, I'm just going to ignore it." And this is not. And this is not the goal of what the scripture says about Paul as well. But the goal is to take a step back and say, "If I don't have peace, or even if I do have peace, is this a godly peace or unpeace, or is it something in my soul dimension that I that I that I haven't dealt with yet?" So we want to make decisions on a cognitive, mental basis, and on an emotional basis, where there's mind and heart coherence, where my thinking and my feeling correlates with each other. Earl Bacon said, is your gut right? And he answered the question to, is your gut right? And he said the following, the answer to this question is yes and no. Your purest intuitions are always right, but those tinged by your own thoughts and emotions may only be partially correct or even completely wrong. So your pure intuition, always right. The intuition that's influenced by, an un, by, 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 by a mindset and emotional states that's not totally healthy can be a bit wrong or totally wrong. And then it goes on to say with practice, you can learn to assess your intuitive experiences and identify when they are more likely to be right. And, you know, for me, I always pray things like, you know, Psalm 37 verse 4 says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. I pray things like, Lord, if this is your desire for me, make it my desire. If this is your desire for me, show me what are, what are some things that are mentally and emotionally that's blocking me from getting into your will. And another thing I pray is like, Lord, um, if you want me to go into this, whether it's whether it's for business, whether it's for work, whether it's for ministry, I always say, open the doors that are uh, uh, that's in your will. Close the doors that's not in your will, because because we do feel and we do hear God, but our feelings and our emotions and our peace or lack of peace is not always a hundred percent correct. And this is why we have to walk with God. We have to walk with the Holy Spirit. We have to walk with scripture. We have to walk with spiritual leaders, but we also have to walk in a way where we deal with our mind and emotions and maybe get a therapist, people who understand mind, mindset and emotions, people who understand psychology, to walk with them with them as well. Because a lot of times we, we, we need somebody to say, I, I can see you have a lack of peace, but the lack of but the lack of peace, sorry, is not because God is telling you not to do it. The lack of peace can be something in your own mind, can be something in your own emotions that you have to deal with. And I want to finish with this quote from Kiyomi Fei. She said, we cannot heal from trauma when we feel good all the time. So when we, we think, you know, when, when, when something is God, when we're following God, when we're serving God, when we when we're in God's will, everything is going to feel good all the time. But sometimes you have to feel a little bit of fear to deal with the fear. Sometimes you have to feel a little bit of anxiety to deal with the, with the anxiety. So when you're in God's will, feelings of fear, feelings of anxiety, feeling of dis feelings of discomfort might be a good thing sometimes because that gives you the opportunity to deal with some things. So there are a lot of ideas on how to hear the voice of God and there are, there's a lot of um, teachings on how to hear the voice of God and maybe in my next video I'll give some more information about that but the, but the goal of this video is just to tell you every single time when you don't feel 100% peace doesn't necessarily mean that you're out of the will of God there might be some other factors in play and I just want to encourage you to take a step back to go evaluate, get under good spiritual leadership that understands these things. 
because spiritual spiritually it's very un, uh, it, it's very important to understand spiritual matters but we cannot just understand spiritual matters and neglect matters of this of the soul which is your mind your will and emotions and your physical body because your gut feeling your emotional gut feeling and your intuition i believe can can even be influenced by the food you eat you will see people who eat healthy and exercise are are, are even more inclined to, 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 to hear better from their intuition and that they are more inclined to hear correctly than people who just don't exercise and eat bad all the time. Okay, so when you, when you want to be inclined spiritually, that's why the Bible speaks about things like fasting. That's why Daniel um, said there are certain things that he's not going to eat. Now, this is not a message to tell you don't eat this, don't eat this, do eat this. What I am saying is even your exercise and the food you eat can influence um, how you hear and how you discern. So, sp uh, so spirit, soul, and body, we must be inclined, and we have to understand that we are holistic beings, and we have to take care of ourselves um, in a in a holistic way to, um, to 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 follow God and fulfill our purpose. Um, let me pray for you father we thank you for this teaching we thank you for everybody that's listening and we just thank you father god that you will that you will show every single person now if they are wondering about something they're like i think this might be god but there's not a hundred percent peace by this video i just want to tell them there is a possibility that lack of peace is not because god is saying no it might be because within your own mind within your own emotion within your own soul there might be some undealt with fear and anxiety and things that might that might play a role. And Father, I just want to encourage everybody to walk with you, maybe to walk with a with a, with a leader and a counselor that you can give them that you can give them more insight in Jesus' wonderful name. And I just come now and I break every single form of worry and fear and condemnation because a lot of people might feel extremely condemned because, like, I'm I'm I'm, I'm doing something for God. But, you know, what if it's not 100% God? I just pray that you will give them a peace and that you will show them in Jesus' wonderful name. And I just want to end with this. You know, if you look at the book of Jonah, Jonah knew what God's will was for his life. And because of fear, because of a lack of peace, he ran in, the total, in a total different direction. Um, God called him to Nineveh and he, he, he went to Tarshish totally in an, in an opposite direction. So he even knew the will of God. Jonah knew the will of God, but because of his own emotional struggles, he went in a totally different direction. But God still got him to Nineveh, uh, to Nineveh and God still fulfilled his purpose in his life. So if you're not always 100% sure if you're doing the right thing, and a lot of people will say this, and it brings so much condemnation, you always have to be 100% sure that you're doing the right thing. No. Um, do what you need to do. If you believe something is the, is the will of God, I want to encourage you to do it. And, you know, if you're not 100% at the right place, God will, will redirect you. He's graceful and merciful like that. I hope this helps you. Thank you so much for watching. And thank you so much for being a part of this ministry. We love you and may God bless you. Goodbye.